So today we're going to be looking at a Vim plugin that I wish I knew about months ago called Vim Git Gutter. This will basically add some Git integration into Vim. Now you might be thinking, is that really useful? Well, after you see the plugin, I guess you can make up your mind. So let's go to my main screen and have a look at this. Now, if you've looked at my Vim before, you might not notice much of a difference. There is actually a bit of a difference though, and that is this thing on the side here and this thing down the bottom here. So on the side here, we have these pluses. This will basically show the lines that you've added. This minus here will show you the lines that you've removed. And this tilde in here will show you the lines that have been modified. And then along the bottom here in my status bar, it basically gives you a count of all of that stuff that's been done. Now that in and of itself isn't too useful to most people. This is how I like to run it. I like to disable most of the features, but there is some other cool stuff you can do with it as well. Now, before we dive much further into that, let's actually look at how to install it. So if you're using Vimplug like I am, all you're going to want to do is add a plug and then airblade slash vim dash git gutter, run plug install, and then you'll be good to go. So let's just have a look at some of the configuration that I've done for this. So that'll be under git gutter, here we go. Now, by default, you don't have this nice green, red, and yellow for things that are set up in here. So I like to actually change those highlight colors. Now, basically to do that, all you have to do is run the highlight command on the thing you want to change. So it's called git gutter add, that is the plus. Git gutter change is for the modified and git gutter delete is for the minus. You can also modify those symbols as well, but we'll get to that in just a bit. Now I've basically just set the colors to very basic colors for those different settings. Nothing too special there. Now, one thing you're also going to want to do if you want to have git gutter always enabled is run this right here. So let g colon git gutter underscore enabled. This will basically say always have git gutter enabled and then just set that to one. Now the other thing that I like to do, you might not be a fan of this, but I really, really hate it when plugins try to mess with my key bindings. So it's really nice that Git Gutter allows you to just completely disable all of the key bindings that they set up for you. If I wanna use any of your features, I'm going to map them myself. And I've actually done that with one of the things in here. And that is for moving between the different hunks. So a hunk is basically any single block of change, remove or added. So I've got that set up on my braces. So if I press the left brace, that'll basically jump between those. If I press the right brace, it'll jump in the other direction. But there is some other stuff you can do with this. Now, if you want this bit of status bar down here, if you're using Vim Airline, it'll work straight out of the box. Vim Airline actually has integration for Git Gutter built into it. If you're not using Airline though, then you have to do a bit of extra work and we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's just go over to the GitHub page and see what else we can do. Now, besides just having that little thing along the side that we saw, there is some other stuff we can do as well. So I'm not a big fan of them, but you also have the option of actually adding highlights around the entire line. Or if you're using NeoVim 0.32 or higher, you can also highlight the actual number for the line. Now let's test out this first one here. So git gutter line highlights enabled. Now be warned that the coloring will be a little off by default because I just haven't set up the colors for this. So the command for that was git gutter line highlights enable. And basically, as you can see, it'll highlight the text that has been changed. Now, I wouldn't leave this on by default. If you're gonna use this, I would recommend just turning it on when you need to look at what's been changed and then turning it back off. Because I would say, at least for me, this is really annoying to work with. So I wouldn't leave it on. And as you notice, the colors are a bit weird. By default, modified is set up to be red with my color scheme. So it just doesn't look exactly right but all of these colors can actually be modified. And as you see for this one, with the line that's been removed, it's in blue. Don't know why it's in blue. My color scheme is just set up weirdly like that. But like with the stuff I showed you before, you can actually modify those with the highlight command. So let's just disable that. Let's run the other one. So this one, as I said before, you need to be running near Vim. I don't know if you can use it with a new version of Vim, but in here it just says NeoVim. So let's turn on the line NR. This one isn't actually too bad. So as you can see, the lines that have been added, the lines that have been modified, and the lines that have been removed, basically it'll highlight the number for that line. This isn't too distracting, I would say. It wouldn't be too bad to run this all the time. But I like to just have that little sign in the column. That's generally enough for me. If you do want to have this bit of extra indication on all the time, this probably is a less distracting way than having the entire thing highlighted. So let's just disable that one again. 
Okay, what else can we actually do in here? So if you want to actually change the maximum number of signs, by default it's set to 500, which is generally going to be fine, but if you need it to be higher, or if you're having performance issues and you need it to be lower, then you can change that in here. If it's too low for the actual file though, I don't really see the point of even running the plugin. If you're, if you're struggling for performance that much, I wouldn't even recommend really running this plugin. Most of the stuff you can do with this plugin is fairly aesthetic, but there is some actual useful stuff you can do as well. Now, here's the useful stuff you can actually do. You can actually interact with Git directly from Vim with this plugin. So you can do things like stage a hunk, you can undo a stage, you can visually select and stage that. I don't use any of these features, but if you want any of this hunk staging stuff, then this is probably a really, really easy way to do it. As I was saying before though, if you do want to disable their bindings and then remap your own, all of these features in here can be remapped however you want them to be remapped. So honestly, I would recommend setting up your own bindings for them rather than relying on what's there by default. But that's going to kind of be up to how you want to work with it, I guess. So as I was saying, pretty much all of this stuff is rebindable. Here is the other stuff. Anything that is omitted from the GitHub page, you can find by just writing in he git gutter, and this should bring up a list of basically everything you can do. So if you go through this and then look at what all of the different things are called. So let's see if we can find something. So uh, basically they're all set up like this. Here we go. So you can see basically what all the different functions are called like this. So yeah, if you want to rebind them however you want to rebind them, then come and check the help page out if it's not on the GitHub page already. Now, what else is actually useful in here? Now, this is another one that I don't actually use because I'm not really a big fan of folding my text, but if you want to fold the text so you're hiding everything that hasn't been changed, then you can run this command right here. This actually might be pretty useful if you're trying to kind of diff a file. So let's just run that. Git gutter fold. And yeah, as we can see, basically everything that hasn't been changed is now just being folded. So as I was saying, I don't really like doing folds to begin with. So if you want to disable that git gutter fold, that brings everything back to the way it should be. But if you do like working with folds, then that actually might be a really, really useful feature for you. By default, if you're using their bindings, that'll be set to ZR. Now, I, I don't know if that's a good binding or not, but yeah, that's what it's set to. So if you want to change the fold text, you can set this value right here, and that'll basically change how that's set there. Once again, don't use the fold, so I don't really care about that. Now, for the status line, if you're not using airline, this is how you'd go about actually adding it to your status line. Now, because I'm using Vim airline, I don't really need to worry about this, but if you're not, then this is basically how you'd go about doing this, and then you can pretty much just modify this to your heart's content. So, basically everything that you can see on screen, so all of the colors, all of the key mappings, all of the line highlights, everything is customizable. Pretty much the way you do that for any of the colors is you use the highlight command and then the name of the thing you want to change. So if you want to change the actual color of this column that all of the symbols are in, you can even do that. That is set to the sign column variable. So I don't change that because I just like it being the same color as my background. But if you do like it being a different color, then you can go and do that as well. Oh, I don't know what's just happened to my screen. Yeah, my graphics card is dying in my computer, so that's why, yeah, it, just ignore that. By default, when there's no symbols to put in the column here, it's going to hide the column. But if for whatever reason you want the column to always be there, then you can run this right here. Now, I like the column to disappear when there's nothing in it, but if you're not like me, then maybe you want to enable that. So this right here will make it so if there's any other symbols that try to stick themselves in this column, then basically you can set if you want that to actually happen. I just leave it as the default setting, so I don't really care about this myself. Now, what about these colors that I was telling you about before? Pretty much they're all documented in here. So if you want to change the git gutter add color, the git gutter change color, the git gutter delete color, pretty much you can see how that's all done in here. And it also shows you what it's actually bound to by default. So by default, git gutter add is set to diff add in your color scheme. Git gutter change is set to diff change in your color scheme. And git gutter delete is set to diff delete in your color scheme. And that's the same with pretty much all of this other stuff like git gutter add line set up like this, the line number highlight colors, and a bunch of other stuff like that. Now I skipped over one, but if you actually want to change the symbols that are being used, 
I don't know why you'd really want to change the symbol, but if you want to change it from being the sort of git looking symbols to random other stuff like XX and YY and ZZ, or maybe something actually useful like, I don't know, maybe you want to use some sort of nerd symbol. I don't know which one would be sensible, but maybe you want to do something like that. Then you can actually set that up in here. I think there's probably like a cross and a tick or something in nerd font, so maybe that would be useful for you. I don't really care about changing that, I actually like the default settings, so I just leave it as it is. Now this here basically just goes over some other stuff you can change the highlights for, so we're not going to keep going over that. But there's some other stuff in here that might be interesting. So by default, diffs are relative to the index. So you can actually change what it's relative to by changing this in here. And you can also change what the diff base is as well. Once again, I wouldn't really recommend changing this. But if for whatever reason you feel like changing it, then go ahead and change that in here, I guess. You can pass some extra arguments to git as well in here. So if for whatever reason you need to pass some arguments to git, I don't use a lot of the git integration features, but if you do, then this might be useful. My personal way of interacting with git is to just open up a terminal. So I'm using float term for that right now, but if you actually want to interact through this plugin, then you can pass those arguments through here. Also, if for whatever reason you use a alternative to grep, I'm guessing git gutter uses grep for something, probably for grepping out the hunks that you're going to be committing, then you can modify that in here. Now, as I showed you before, you can have git gutter always enabled with this variable right here, but you can set some other stuff up like that as well. So if you want to have your signs disabled by default, or you want to have line highlighting enabled, or you want to have line number highlighting enabled, then you can have a look at these variables here. I might just add this line in here into my vimrc, just because, I don't know, seems like not a bad idea. So this will basically have the line number highlighting set up by default. So let's just reopen my nvim config and just have a brief look at that. So as we can see, now that's basically got that enabled. So if we zoom in just a bit so you can see it better. Yeah, now the line number highlighting is just enabled by default. So I don't know, I might play around with that, see if I like it or not. I'm not really sure how I feel about the line number highlighting. I don't know if it's too distracting or not. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I've, I haven't really made up my mind, I guess. And also by default, it's set up to actually do asynchronous updates. I wouldn't recommend turning this off because if you do, the plugin is going to be significantly slower, but if you have some reason you want it to run synchronously, don't know why you'd want to do that, then you can disable the async with this variable right here. Now, the other stuff in here is kind of just about making extensions to the commit stuff you can do with this plugin. I'm not using any of this though, so I can't really say whether it's too useful or not. As I was saying before, I'm kind of just using this as an aesthetic plugin. I might honestly just fork it and strip out everything I don't care about and then just pretty much keep the sign column and keep the thing down here and then just get rid of everything else because I'm not using any of the committing stuff, but if you do want to use that, then there are some extensions you can see down here. So things like operate on every line in a hunk, operate on every changed line in a file, cycle through hunks in current buffer, things like this. I don't use any of these features, but if for whatever reason these seem useful to you, then come and check this out for yourself. Now, I did mention the thing about airline down here. So by default, this is set up to actually run by default. But I like to have it so if there's no changes in a file, that it's going to disappear. So let's just have a look at my airline settings and see if we can find that. Basically, all you have to do to do that is set up this variable right here. So airline hash extensions hash hunks hash non-zero only. So if I just show you that in a separate file, basically, as you see over here, now that there's no changes to this file, that thing has just disappeared. But if I had this in a git directory and then I started adding lines to it, then it's actually going to say that there's some changes down here. Actually, I can show you that. Let's bring up a script that I know has no changes in it. So go into my scripts directory. Let's just bring up this one right here. If we go over here, as you can see down the bottom, it doesn't say that there's any changes, but I am in a git directory right now. So if I make a change, it should say, yes, here we go. So now it says there's actually something down here. Let's remove a line as well. And let's add another line down here. So there, as we see now, it says I have two changes and one modified line. So it's working as expected. It didn't show up until I actually added some changes to this file. If we get rid of those changes, there we go. As we see, it now disappears. So that's working as you'd expect it to. 
This isn't really a Git gutter thing, this is more of an airline thing, but it is nice to see that integration from other plugins. So if there's anything about this plugin that I didn't cover that you're a bit confused about, be sure to come and actually check the help page. So H-E git gutter, and I think that this is pretty good. Now, I haven't had a good read through it. Having a little skim through it, it seems like it is actually pretty good documentation. So come check this out as your first point of contact for anything you want to know about git gutter. Obviously the GitHub page will have a lot of information as well, but I would say that the help page probably has a bit more. So be sure to check this out as well. But on that note, I think that's a pretty good place to end the video. So before I go, I want to thank my patrons, Andrew, Ray, Oki, Larry, and Zilf, because they help make this channel possible. So if you want to support the channel, or if you just want to have your name read out at the end of the video, there will be a link to my Patreon down below. If you want to support the channel monetarily, but you don't really want to support my Patreon, there will be some Amazon affiliate links down below, so you can buy the gear that I use for these videos, or just really buy whatever you want. Also, I've got my social links, so my Discord, my Telegram, and my alternate video platforms, so my BitTube, and my library. Remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment, and also remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>